the Davenport Automatic Screw Machine. Basic identification continued. In this chapter, we will continue basic identification of the Davenport Model B five spindle automatic screw machine. We have already pointed out the three stage control box and the starting clutch lever, which are at the front of the machine or operator's position. We will now discuss other parts of the machine that you should know. The front of the machine and the locating and locking lever. The locating and locking lever is at the front of the machine. The purpose of the locating or locking lever is to fit over each of five blocks, one for each work spindle on the revolving head. These are called the locating blocks. In this way, the locating and locking lever locks the revolving head in place to prevent the head from moving while a workpiece is being machined. The locating and locking lever is activated automatically by the locating and locking cam. The front cam levers. There are four front cam levers. Each of these cam levers is activated by an individual cam. Each cam lever is spring return. The front cam levers control the cross-working tool positions. The cross-working tool positions are the front slide, the rear slide, the rear tool arm, and the front tool arm. They are called cross-working because they operate across the stock to machine workpieces. Before we continue, it is important for you to know that the machine is divided into five areas called positions. Although these positions do not actually have numbers written on them, they are known by all Davenport operators as one, two, three, four, and five. The positions run counterclockwise and begin with the front slide, position one, or first position. Knowing where a certain position is on the stationary head is an easy way to identify the location of a particular work spindle, tool spindle, or cross-working tool. The front cam levers are numbered, although actual numbers do not appear, according to the position in which the particular cam lever activates the tool. The front cam levers, left to right, should be learned as operating in these positions. Three, two, five, and one. The third position front cam lever activates the rear tool arm. The second position front cam lever activates the rear slide. The fifth position front cam lever activates the front tool arm. The first position front cam lever activates the front slide. Remember, the front cam lever positions left to right are three, two, five, one. You will learn more about these cam levers and their tools in the chapters on tooling. The hand wheel. The hand wheel is located at the front of the machine. The hand wheel is used to cycle the machine or back the machine up manually when the machine is not running. Never touch the hand wheel when the machine is running, since this could cause serious injury. The work chute. The, the work chute is also located at the front of the machine behind the hand wheel. Finished work pieces drop through this chute into the work piece container. The burning spindle opening and closing cam. The burning spindle opening and closing cam is at the front of the machine. 
behind and to the right of the hand wheel. You will later be shown how the bearing spindle opening and closing cam can be used as a quick way to note the machine cycle position. The right end of the machine. At the right end of the machine we have already pointed out the chip conveyor and the feed gear box. The feed gear box. The feed gear box is located at the right end of the machine. It contains the feed change gears. The feed change gears control the cycle time of the machine according to a particular job. This gearbox also houses the low speed or roll away clutch, which is attended to by the maintenance staff only. The right end cam levers. There are five right end cam levers. Like the four front cam levers, each of these levers is also activated by an individual cam in a spring return. The right end cam levers activate the five end working tool spindles located in the stationary head. Left to right, the positions for the right end cam levers are 5, 1, 4, 2, 3. Remember, the stationary head is divided into five areas or positions. The areas or positions on the stationary head are numbered to indicate the positions in which a particular end working tool is operating. The rear of the machine. On the rear of the machine we have already discussed the main power box, the coolant pump, and the Beezer lubricating pump. The drive system. The Davenport automatic screw machine is powered by a 7 and 1 half horsepower motor. The power from this motor is transmitted through four V-belts to the main drive shaft. The belts are contained in the V-belt housing, which is located at the extreme right as you face the rear of the machine. The spindle change gears. The gear cover at the rear of the machine covers up the spindle change gears. These gears govern the speed of the work spindles in the revolving head according to each job. The high speed clutch. The high speed clutch is located at the rear of the machine. The high speed clutch engages during the machine's index, non-working part of the cycle, to reduce idle time. The high-speed clutch is automatically activated by the high-speed clutch lever, which is also at the rear of the machine. The brake. Each Davenport automatic screw machine is equipped with a brake. Unlike the brake in an automobile, this is not used to stop the machine. The brake on a Davenport automatically keeps the entire machine cycling at a uniform speed while the tools are working. This will be explained in a later chapter. The left end of the machine. On the left end of the machine we have already pointed out the wire case carrier. The wire case carrier is a container for the bar stock or material which is fed into the machine. The stock paddle. Adjacent to the wire case carrier is the loading rod and stock paddle. The stock paddle is used by the operator to manually insert bars of stock into the work spindles. The stock paddle is located next to the wire case carrier which extends out from the left of the machine and is controlled by the operator from the front of the machine. 